I spent the last two days talking to a young man who would consider himself an atheist. Now, he expressed why he thinks I'm wasting my time uploading Christian videos to YouTube and that evolution is the only thing that makes sense. To him, evolution is all that makes sense. And me being a Christian is just a waste of time. Now, I've said it before on this channel that I don't argue or debate fools. OK, now I do believe there can be a place to have friendly debates between Christians and atheists. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's all absolutely futile. OK, it's pointless. And the reason I think Christian versus atheist debates are pointless is because the atheist is not hearing what he needs to hear because he's fighting it. He's fighting what he should be hearing in an attempt to win a discussion. I'm not going to argue and debate a fool. OK, and it's not me calling them a fool. It's God's word that does. Psalms 53, 1. What I will do in love is share the good news of the gospel that their soul may be redeemed. Now, if they don't want to hear that, then that's where the buck stops. Listen, when you think about the atheist, the God hater, okay, there's almost nothing more sad and hopeless than the life of an atheist. They spend their whole life fighting God. And one of the ways they do this is by suppressing the realities of his existence that can be seen in his creation. Basically, his handiwork, God's handiwork. For example, they'll go on vacation and they'll sit on a beach and stare at the sunset. They'll look at the different colors in the sky, the blue, the red, the orange, how they all come together. And you know what they'll say? They'll say, that's beautiful. Look at what evolution did. See, one of the reasons why the atheist who dies in their sins will hear from God on that day, depart from me, I never knew you. Well, because when they looked at his creation, his design, they did not send up praise and recognition to the creator. This is one of the ways that the sinner stores up wrath for the day of wrath, Romans 2. Last year, one of my subscribers sent me a video of a snake, okay? And so look at the complexity in God's design. This particular snake is found in parts of Arizona. It dwells in chalk rock, white and black stone rocks. And what it does is it camouflages itself to look exactly like the rock. But check this out. The tip of the snake's tail is the form of a black spider. The snake's tail literally looks like a black spider and it moves back and forth and it even has eight legs. OK, and so the snake blends into the rock and what it does is it moves its tail back and forth and it makes it look like the spider is walking all over the rock, back and forth on the rock. And when I first saw the video, I didn't see a snake. I just saw a spider. And so a bird in slow motion swoops in to grab the spider. And right before the bird bites the tail, the snake jumps out and grabs the bird midair. Listen, that's absolutely amazing. But you know what the atheist does? He looks at that and says, evolution, random nothingness made that. And for that reason is why the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, Romans 118. But with all that being said, there is hope for the atheist. You still have time to repent. Repentance is humbling yourself, putting down your weapons of warfare that you have used to foolishly fight God and to change your mind, to say to God, I will not fight you anymore. I will submit to you. I will take you as Lord of my life. That's what it means to repent. It means to stop fighting and to change your mind. Okay. And when you do that, he will save you and you will receive everlasting life. Listen, I'm a Christian. I have a hope. I actually look forward to death. And to the atheist, you can have this same confidence and joy, but only in Christ. And you have to come at him on his terms and do it his way. Okay. And so there is a hope. But time is short. Life is a vapor. For by him all things were created. Want door him zijn alle dingen geschapen. It doesn't matter who you are tonight. Het maakt niet uit wie jij vanavond bent. You may claim to be atheist and agnostic. Het kan zijn dat je zegt dat je atheist bent of agnost. You may be a hater of all religion and even a hater of God. Het kan zijn dat je een dat je godsdienst haat en dat je de Heere God zelfs haat. The very mention of Christ may set your blood to boiling. Het kan zijn dat alleen al het noemen van Christus uh, je bloed doet uh, doet koken. You may consider yourself an enemy of the cross. Het kan zijn dat je jezelf beschouwt een vijand van het kruis. But know this. Maar dit moet je weten. Jesus Christ created you. Jezus Christus heeft jou geschapen. And in that he has a claim upon you. En dat betekent dat hij aanspraak op jou kan maken. He is your maker. Hij is jouw schepper. And by virtue of that he is also your possessor, your owner. En daarom is hij ook degene die jou bezit. And not only does he take ownership. 
En hij heeft niet alleen het eigendomsrecht op jou. But he is also Lord. Maar hij is ook Heer. You say, I do not see that. En dan zeg je misschien, maar daar zie ik niks van. Where is his throne? Waar is zijn troon dan? Know this, en dit moet je weten. That God has appointed a day dat God een dag heeft bepaald. In which he will judge every man. De dag waarop hij iedereen zal oordelen. Through this one whom was crucified by wicked men. Door degene die gekruisigd werd door slechte mensen. Jesus Christ. Jezus Christus. His throne is coming. Zijn troon is aanstaande. His judgment is near. En zijn oordeel is nabij. And on that day when he judges. En op die dag als hij zal oordelen. Everyone will recognize his right to judge. Dan zal iedereen erkennen dat hij het recht heeft om te oordelen. Because he is judging the very thing he has made. Omdat hij namelijk oordeel zal vellen over alles dat hij heeft geschapen. Do you also realize the absolute arrogance of seeking to live independently from him? Begrijp je nu ook hoe arrogant het is om helemaal los van hem te leven. The Bible says he made you. Want de Bijbel heeft gezegd dat hij jou heeft gemaakt. And not only that, but he sustains you. Maar, en niet alleen dat, maar ook dat hij jou leven onderhoudt. It is the great truth of Christianity that God created the world. Het is de grote waarheid van het christendom dat God deze wereld heeft geschapen. But he did not leave it to itself. Maar hij heeft de wereld ook niet aan zichzelf overgelaten. He sustains the world. Hij onderhoudt deze wereld. In the same way, know this. En gelijkerwijze moet je ook begrijpen. God created you. Dat God je heeft geschapen. And he sustains you. En hij is de onderhouder van jouw bestaan. The next breath you take. De volgende ademtocht van je lijf. Comes from Christ. Die komt van Christus. Your heart beats in the next few minutes. Elke hartslag van de komende minuten. Only because of Jesus Christ. Is er alleen maar vanwege Jezus Christus. Can you see how insane it is to seek to live independently from him? Zie je dan nu ook hoe dwaas het is om er naar te zoeken om los van hem te leven? Imagine a man laying in a hospital. Moet je je voorstellen iemand die in het ziekenhuis ligt. And he's unconscious. En is buiten bewustzijn. And he is connected to a life support system. En hij is verbonden aan machines die hem in leven houden. Several tubes that keep him alive. Allerlei slangen die hem levend houden. And every once in a while the man wakes up. En nu en dan, dan wordt deze man, komt deze man bij bewustzijn. And like a wild animal, he grabs at the tubes. En als een wild dier begint hij die slangen vast te pakken. And he tries to pull them out of his arm. En probeert hij die slangen uit zijn lijf te trekken. He tries to destroy the life support system. En dan, is die, dan probeert hij eigenlijk datgene wat hem in leven houdt te vernietigen. He must be laid down in the bed once more and tied down. En dan moet hij opnieuw in bed worden gelegd en worden vastgebonden. Because in his fit of insane rage he is going to kill himself. Want in zijn dwaze woede is hij bezig om zichzelf te vermoorden. That is the perfect description of man without Christ. Dat is een beschrijving van de mens buiten Christus. Like a wild animal. Als een wild dier. Like an insane man. Als een dwaas, uh, verstandeloos iemand. You seek to live separately from the very one who is the source of life. Probeer je uh, afgescheiden te leven van degene die de bron van het leven is. But the Bible says by him all things were created. De Bijbel zegt dat door hem alle dingen zijn geschapen. But not only that. En dat niet alleen. This prepositional phrase by him can also be interpreted in him. Deze stelling dat er staat door hem kan ook betekenen uh, in hem. That all things were created in Christ. Dat alle dingen zijn geschapen in Christus. Now what does that mean? Wat betekent dat? Reality is found in Christ alone. De werke- 